Hey, everybody. Um, is anybody there? Hello. Hello. It's time to have a little champagne. It's champagne time. A little <laughs> champagne time. So you can say something in the uh, in the little um, chat on the right. Mm. Now, don't everybody rush. Really? Yeah. Don't like. <laughs> I don't know. What to say. I'm going to say hello. Hello. So I'm going to make this smaller here. Oh. Oh, Sharon, hello, Sharon. You're here with your wine and your snacks. Hello, Tachi Schlesinger, hello. How do you know all this stuff? I can see it right there. You have your glasses on. Oh. Hi, Lenny. Hey, Bortan. He's all calling all the way from, um, it sounded like an Italian. He's calling all the way from California. He's Portuguese. Oh, very nice. Yes, he's yeah, Ferreira. He's uh, Portuguese. So, so I've never done these things before, so I have no idea what I'm doing. You might want to look over here. Where? Well, actually, look at that green thing. That's the best thing, but whatever. Um, does everyone have... A little drink in the hands, because we are, we have an entire bottle, and speaking of Tachi, her husband actually gave us this. Yes, that so was from Renato wonderful. and you. Renato and Tachi, and we're having a wonderful time drinking, and we've been drinking it for a little bit, so <laughs> having a good time. So, what's this about? Well, this is, first of all, I hope all of you are doing well. Hope yes. you're all in, enjoying your time at home, and I hope everyone is safe and well and taking care of themselves and their family. And um, and so, uh, so I'm I'm looking at text here from my director, quote unquote. Um, but um, what we want to do here, ooh, nice, right, Sharon? What we're trying to do here is is nothing more than just have a little bit of a cocktail hour with you, chat, talk, ask us any questions about cooking that we have, ask us anything about us, anything about the site. You're bored, you're scared, you don't know what's going on, you don't know what to do with cooking in this kind of this time. We're here to help, to laugh, to make things easy, just to kind of lift spirits because we were a failure when we tried to cook the other day. No. Three times we totally, um, we just were cut off because we had the wrong equipment, which we're getting. Oh, Renato says hello. Say hello to Renato, and he's honored that we're having the wine. We'll open one here, too. Excellent. So let's kick this off. Does anybody have any questions maybe they want to ask us? Oh, while and by the way, this is not going to be an hour. There's no way I'm going to. You said it was an hour. I never said it was an hour. You said it was an hour. I never said it was an hour. Okay. okay. I said maybe a half hour, but not an hour. It's too much. So anyway. Too much yapping. Hmm. Okay, what? So, any questions? Anyone have any questions for us that you want to talk, or we can just continue talking? Well, since nobody has any questions, let me tell you a little bit about how I'm enjoying this time. It's probably bad to say that I'm enjoying this time, but as most of you probably know, I live in New York most of the time. Mm -hmm. This Connecticut thing is a weekend. It's a country. And I've been in the country now for Question almost weeks. two weeks. I came two weeks tomorrow. Two weeks. I came mm -hmm. on the 13th. And I'm afraid to say it, but I'm enjoying it. It's nice mm -hmm. and quiet. I feel a little bit removed from New York, which my friends in New York are telling me is pretty awful. Um, so anyway, hi, Gail. Um, so anyway, I just thought I'd put that out there. So I'm Sharon, becoming a country man. Country boy. Country man. Country boy. <laughs> um, so Sharon asked, what have you been cooking? God, what haven't we been cooking? Who's we? You haven't cooked a damn thing. What did I bake yesterday? <laughs> uh, bread. Two loaves made, of bread. bread yeah. Who made dinner last night? I did. The breaded chicken? Oh, I, I made the chicken. We, we, oh, we did. We worked on that. Breaded together. chicken. We had bread. And I have made barbecued spare ribs. Did. I have made, um, what else did I make? I made something that was terrible. Um, I'd be very careful. That was a test for Leeds Culinary. Oh, yeah. He's I made a tagine. A tagine that really, it was so spicy we couldn't stand <laughs> He's it. He's giving away it was awful. company secrets. I don't think it'll be on the site. It was a flop. No, we're going to be, well, we won't put it on the site. What else? I made something else. Well, yes, you have been. I've made Kevin lot. Broadway. Hello, Kevin Broadway. Hi, Kevin. He is our editor, everyone, the lovely, the wonderful Kevin Broadway. Um, what else? We, a lot of bread, a lot of baking. And um, now I am soaking beans to make Portuguese beans on Saturday. And delicious. what else are we doing? Uh, I'm doing? I'm making more bread. I'm making a sourdough loaf, sandwich loaf for him tomorrow. So it's been a, a lot of baking. What have you guys been baking? Sharon, how about you? What have you been baking? I like taking a little drink here. A little drinky pair. <laughs> so anyone? No. What you guys? <laughs> Hello? This might be a flop. <laughs> no, it's not. We just, it's not, we can't hear them talking. Oh, okay. Um, Focaccia, see, baking. Oh, uh, yeah. Baking. You know what's interesting? I was on um, Fox Radio this morning. Um, no affiliation to Fox or not. 
um, tomato sauce. Wonderful, Sharon. And one of the things I told the host, uh, Lillian, is that everybody's baking. Everyone's baking bread and bread and more bread. Oh, margarita cookies. Ooh. So you're making focaccia, tomato sauce, and a margarita cookie. I think she's going Italian. We're going over your house. Yes. And uh, Kevin just made some oatmeal cookies for the first time last night. Kevin, how were they? Did you make them for my site? If you nope. didn't lie. If you didn't lie, really. If you want to keep your job, lie. Uh, so Gail made cabbage, bacon, and pearl onions in a crock pot. That sounds good. That's it. Very good. Gail, I miss you. It's been at least 15, 15 20 years, years. Since you got oh, married, sorry. I think. Yeah. Lemon bread. Oh, Laura's been making lemon bread. That sounds lovely. It does, Sharon. Come on over. Send the address. Yeah. Um, but everyone's been baking bread, and I we're, we're re uh, upping our our podcast, Talking With My Mouthful, that Renee and I co-host, and sometimes the one is on it as a guest. And the first guest we wanted was Zoe uh, Francois, of course, from Five Minute Artisan Bread. Everyone knows her, Zoe Bakes. And she is so booked that we had to beg her to come on the show because everyone wants her to demonstrate bread baking. Is she coming on? She's coming on. She's our and first we had guest. That, we had that video. And Lila, for, uh, Lila, how are you? Had to order you some King Arthur Flower stores are out of it. You know what's interesting? The two things that the stores were out of when we went to the Big Y, all the flowers and all the waters. The two big things they were out of. Uh, so Kevin Broadway, I did. You did it from the site. They were a little undercooked, and that's because my oven doesn't have any temperature ticks. So it just has <laughs> to on or off. Oh, I'm sorry about that's that. That's interesting. Oh, chicken Vesuvio. Oh, that sounds What wonderful. is that? Uh, I was just looking at the pic of us and Lupinati many years ago. That's Gail, our friend. We went to Italy together. Um, Laura, tell us what chicken Vesuvio is for those people who don't know. Including me. Including uh, the one. And I'm going to have another drink. This is good. We should ask them lots of questions. And every time we don't know something, we drink. We'd be drunk in 10 minutes. <laughs> You're at lush. So we're waiting on chicken Vesuvio? Um, yes, but I also have to write a note um, to someone. This is rude, David. You shouldn't be doing that. No, it's to our director. Oh. I was just looking at the picture about. So um, anyone have any cooking questions besides what we've made? I'm curious to know if you guys have any questions um, about technique or, or things that you're wondering about or things that we can answer for you. I'm going to pour some more champagne while we wait. Let's see. What else are we doing now? We only have oh, one bottle. I can't say. I know. I'm really <laughs> cutting into this. I'm so sorry. Um, so, yeah, so one of the things, what is your favorite knife brand? Oh, Kevin, that's a great question. Um, I, there are three of them that we, we have. We have, um, Henkel, yeah. right? We have, um, Wusthof, and that there's a, one. and there's a new one that actually I sliced the top of my finger off, uh, mm -hmm. that sharp. It's called Material, M-A-T-E-R-I-A-L, like material. And they got beautiful white handles and very, very sharp. 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 And I love shop. Can you tell I'm from New England? It's shop knives. Love them. Really, really love them. So Laura's saying that um, Italian uh, American dish from chicken Vesuvio, chicken on the bone and wedges of potato saute with garlic, oregano, white wine, and olive oil. Oh, oh my that sounds God. Delicious. That sounds delicious. Can you send us a recipe? Yeah, we don't have it on the site. Or anything. And Tachi said, how to freeze herbs. Uh, you know, Tachi, a lot of times you freeze herbs, like, for instance, with pesto. You actually make pesto. You take the basil, you make the pesto, and you put it into the little ice cubes and stuff like that. That is the best way. I don't really freeze herbs. I dry them. Like, we had some leftover parsley that, he, uh, that the one chopped up. I let it just dry. Then I put it in a little container. And when you eat it, it is so much fresher and so much more flavorful. So I don't really freeze. I dry. So let's but in the refrigerator. Wait, you only have one bottle to bubble. I know, Stephanie. I'm so terribly sorry. We we ran out. We've been drinking like there's no tomorrow. Um and Gail you, asked about freezing homemade uh, pesto, pesto, right? You want to yeah. say that? Because you do yeah, that every yeah. year. I do that every year because we always grow basil in the garden. Just simply take it and put it inside a plastic uh, bag. A Ziploc. A Ziploc bag. Mm -hmm. take, make sure all of the air is out. The other thing that I do is I flatten it and make sure all the air is out. And then put it in the freezer. It's beautiful. It lasts a long time. I hate to tell you that we have some pesto from at least two years ago, but and it's still whatever. delicious. <laughs> it's and still, you know, one of the it. things you may not want you may want to do is not put the cheese in, and we add the cheese sometimes later. No, because my pesto always has the cheese. Never mind. Scratch that. Yeah. You can put the cheese in, and there's no problem. Yeah. yeah. Um, so Sharon said she used leftover herbs to make herb salt. That's very lovely too. Making herb salt. Good idea, Sharon. How do you do that? What you do is you actually take the herbs, Sharon. This is what how I do it. You chop up herbs, let's say whatever the herbs are, 
and then you mix it like a sea salt, and it'll actually draw out the flavor, the moisture, but it keeps the flavor. Is that how you do it? So Suzanne Forty. Hi, Suzanne. Hi, Suzanne. We've been eating lots of beans. <laughs> oh, I don't day. want to be in your house. <laughs> <laughs> how old is your sh uh, sourdough starter? Well, my sourdough, Tachi, how old is my sourdough starter? Probably since, what, maybe April? About a year old. It was Tachi who's on this, uh, actually gave gave me some of hers, and it's been going ever since. Um, so B.E. Koch says, hi, David on the one. It's 3 p.m. here. Did you answer the question? I did. It's about since last year. Oh, okay. Hello. Pay attention. Um, hi, David on the one. It's only 3 p.m. here in Morrison, Colorado. Too early for some bubbles, but you know no, what? No, it's not. 3 p.m.? It's really? after 12. We really advocate day drinking these days. We really do. Yeah. Um, I chop the herbs and the salt together and incorporate them. Um, that's good. I like that, too. So do you use... So it's an herb salt, then. That's what she said. She makes herb salt. Oh. So tell me, Sharon, do you... Um, uh, what was I going to say now? Do you sea salt? Like flake salt. So Tachi says a little bit over a year ago for mine, that's almost three years old. Yes. So mine is the daughter of Tachi's. Tachi's is three years old. Mine's a year old. So um, yeah. So that's how old our sourdough starter is. And if you guys want to see uh, how I do the tartine uh, bakery bread, which you can go to my Instagram feed. And then in the highlights, it says um, sourdough. And it has from the very beginning of mixing it all the way through to the very end. Uh, and it shows the clush that I use. I use um, a meal en riz, right? A meal en riz clush, which is, it's a base and the clush is on top and it comes off as opposed to a pot that you put the bread in because you can burn yourself. And I find that so much easier to use. Um, okay, so so let's see. What are, did we miss any questions here? So Laura, she, Laura, you use the New York Times recipe for chicken Vesuvio, right? I think that's what she said. Um, so what other questions are we having? Um, so great. Um, so yes, that's what Laura said. So she does get that from the New York Times. I like the New York Times. Anyone made my um, chocolate chip cookies while you've been quarantined? Anyone? Not that my ego is going to be bruised, but just checking. Will my ego be bruised? <laughs> Yes, yes. Stephanie, yes. Oh, good. All you people are making it. I'm so glad. Um, are you all using the discs or are you using just chopped up chocolate or, God forbid, chocolate chip, Sharon? Not yet. Because if you use the discs, right, they're so much better. They are. Because what they are is the couverture chocolate. And couverture chocolate is what you melt to cover um, truffles, to cover your truffles with. And so they have a high um, cocoa fat content. And so when, you, when they go into the, the cookies, Instead of like chocolate chip cookies, don't don't melt because they've got all this kind of stuff in it. These will melt into these little lakes of chocolate, and they create a strata. Oh, they're wonderful, Cindy Eastman. I had a question, but I started drinking and I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin, you use chocolate chips. Well, I'm going to have to to um, turn you on to chocolate discs from I used ones from Jacques Torres. Good information about the sourdough. I'm planning on starting some soon. I don't think you're going to be disappointed. And the recipe and tartine, which you can get, we don't have it on the site, but you can get it on New York Times. Um, they have the tartine bread. It sounds more complicated than it really is, and I had more questions than I expected to have on it. But once you get the hang of it, also just ping me, and I'll be happy to help you. It's very, very easy. Actually, Tachi, who's on this, taught me shortcuts. And it's wasn't it delicious? No, oh, wonderful. Right? Really wonderful. Okay. I love sourdough. So Sherry Hall said, yep, made the chocolate chip cookies. Looking forward to warm cocktails later this evening. To the warm cocktail later this evening. So Suzanne says to you, because I know you can't read. So Alan, I what's I can read. A, I just can't see. But you can't see because your glasses yes, on. Yes, yes he can read. He's what, not illiterate. What does Suzanne say? Suzanne says, um, oh, you ah. so Alan, what's it like cooking with David? I made the famous chocolate chip cookies with him once, and he said, you aren't a baker, are you? Horrors. Well, Suzanne. Be very careful. It does 27 matter. years is at stake right now. No, it doesn't matter. It is not easy. It really, I mean, you know, David, it is not easy. You, I have to follow the recipe to the T, which a recipe, it pisses him off. a recipe to me is just a guideline. It's, it's very difficult. You know, you want to have fun in the kitchen, you don't do it with David. Whatever. <laughs> Thank you, H.E. Duffy. You made the chocolate chunk cookies. Excellent. Gail, you can get the discs. If you go to mrchocolate.com, which is Jacques Torres Chocolates, 
it, you have to search for it, but they have the discs and they're the proper ones. They're the ones that I did with the New York Times um, article when I worked with him on it. That's the disc. So it's mrchocolate.com. Or Gail, the other thing that you could do Be careful. is just, you know, when everything is all behind us, you could come to visit us in New York and then right down the street, we could take you and you could buy. We'll even buy the disc for you if you come to New York. Yeah, well, there you go. So remember um, Rocco, Andrew Rocco down in uh, Florida? He was the chef that worked with us when we did the uh, cooking for the Ronald McDonald House. Yes. He says, hello to you both. Love everything about the show. Do you have a good croissant recipe? I have one, but would love to see what you have. We do. There's one on the site, uh, Rocco, which is really easy and wonderful. It comes from, I don't know if Renee is on here, my editor-in-chief, but it comes from, I believe, um, oh, who did the famous baker? She had the, the restaurant on the Upper West Side. Oh, you know. I can't think of her. Sarah? Sarah something. Forgot. Oh, Sarah Best Kitchen? Yeah. Sarah Beth Levine. So it's it's from Sarah Beth Levine, and it's it's really wonderful, um, Rocco. And Tachi says she can help with sourdough anytime. And <laughs> Suzanne Fortier, you're a brave man, Alan. Thank you very much, Suzanne, for sticking up for me in such a marvelous uh, way. And I don't think she's sticking up for you. I know she's, she's not. I'm being sarcastic. Oh. That's called that's dripping with sarcasm, darling. Oh, I didn't recognize it. Dripping. Thank with you sarcasm. for sticking up for me, Suzanne. I love you. Now, can people see these things or not? Yes, all of you can see each other's questions, right? Because I really can't tell. Oh, okay. Where we see them, I don't know if you guys can. Um, oh, excuse me. The bubbles are going to my head. <laughs> um, Gail, yes. And Kevin said yes. Okay. So, any other questions? Um, let's see. What other questions would, would you? What would you want to ask me if you had the chance to be with a famous cook? What would you want to know? Can you really cook? Or do you just follow a recipe? <laughs> well, Kevin says something. What's up with all the milkmen and cow imagery on the site? Of, you know, oh, really? That's funny. Yeah. Well, you know why? Well, of course. Yeah. So the reason <laughs> why is my last name is David Leet in Portuguese. No, your last name is not David Leet. Your last name is Leet. My last name is Leet. My full name is David Leet. And so oh, my last name, Leet, in Portuguese is pronounced what? Leite. What is it pronounced as? Leite. I don't know. Late. Oh, late. Okay. Late. And late in Portuguese is milk. I, and so, it, I didn't know that. I knew it was milk, but late. Late, not late. Oh. Late. Okay. And um, 27 years, you didn't know that. Oh, whatever. Go on. And so when I was a kid, and my mother used to say to me, I'm, I'm talking like six years old, seven years old, she'd say, hey, kids, you know what? Your father's the milkman. Now, the milkman was a guy who came to our house every day with these glass milk bottles, and just like this, just like this, this is my water bottle, just like that. And this man was about maybe 85 million years old at that, age, at that time, and I was horrified to think that that was my father. And finally, I understood when she said, hey, kid, you're the milkman's son. My last name is Milk. My father's a man. His last name is Milk. So that's why we do the thing with the milkman and the cow and then, you know, LC productions on our videos like LC the cow. And shouldn't a, have said that. You know, well, I'm not going to get sued. Oh, okay. So anyway, so that's what that imagery is all about. And then so, so Suzanne said, all kidding aside, both David and Alan are wonderful cooks and the most gracious of hosts. Thank you, Suzanne. I'm blushing. <laughs> I am blushing. Thank you so much, darling. I'm blushing. You're welcome anytime, as you know. Um, so then we have Sharon says, if I were to make just one recipe from your website, what should I make? That's a hard one. That's I know a what I think. One. I know what I think it should be. Hmm. What would you think? I don't know. I mean, that's uh, there's so many recipes. I, I would. would well, you, you probably say the pork and clams. Exactly. How'd you know that? Because you make it all the time. So my pork and clams, which is from my cookbook, which is also on the site, it's my favorite. Favorite recipe, and I make it all the time. But it's I delicious, and it's not that hard to do. He Liz Mayo from Ver Vero Beach. Remember Liz? Hi, Liz. Beach? You know, I think a recipe that he likes an awful lot, the shrimp with leeks. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah, that's a recipe that you the like. shrimp with leeks. That's yeah, good. it's it's there's a lot of wonderful. Yeah, recipes. Shrimp it just with, depends what you're in the mood. Shrimp for. and leeks is very very fast. We make it all yeah. the time during the week. There's uh, going to be a, a rib recipe coming out. I'm pretty sure that is going oh, to be Oh, fantastic. Delicious. Can't it say a, what it is. Oh, it's an Asian rib recipe is all yeah. we can say. Yeah. So Liz Mayo says, waving from Vero Beach. Hello, let's wave back. We love Vero Beach. We were I, thinking of coming there this year. I but made, um, yeah, we did. We were going to go there before this whole thing happened. I made Ahmed biscotti today. Any suggestion as to keep the top smooth when I cut them, they crack. 
Hmm. If you ha- if there's some moisture inside, that that's when it's easier to do. If if when they're completely dry, it's much harder. Also, use a serrated knife. A serrated knife will certainly help. So Suzanne says, "Ina's lemon chicken from the oh side, yeah, which is a great one." There's many. Hello, it's your nephew Chris. Hello, Chris. Hey, Chris, thank you from. Look what is it? It's red rum murder. Like red rum is is, is murder backwards. Oh, <laughs> that's so spooky. Um, but thank you for joining us, Chris. The blueberry crumble is also delish. Yes, Susan, get good. The blueberry crumble on the site. It's really good. Um, They're all good. Oh, and AG says make the chocolate cake, the Hershey's chocolate cake. Oh, the Hershey's chocolate cake with the peanut butter icing. No, that's not on the site, the peanut butter icing. Oh. No, it's the chocolate icing. The peanut I like butter where the icing. peanut butter icing is. We do the fantastic. peanut butter icing. I but, don't um, that, no. no, it's not on the site. And we then, should put it on. So also Lila's waving from Vero Beach, too. Oh, okay. I Vero Beach. So... Uh, Nate Mayor 13 says, okay, who decides what's for dinner? Whoever is cooking, basically. That's not true. Well, whoever is cooking, I when I'm cooking and I say what I'm going to make, if he doesn't want it, it's better that I make what he wants. Let's put it that way. Yeah, or yeah, or, yeah, or I just won't eat. Yeah. Like he like he I'm not a big salmon fan, and he just he can eat salmon until it's coming out of his ears. So I kind of pass on salmon sometimes. Um wait. All right, so Sarah Magic said, wait, I want to hear about the peanut butter iced cake. So, well, it's a peanut butter frosting. It's made with mascarpone cheese, peanut butter, uh, confection sugar, sugar, and um, a little bit of vanilla in there. Uh, might be a, yeah. no, 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 no vanilla. vanilla. I um, can't remember the whole thing, but we'll, we have to put it out it's there. It's part so of a good. recipe from a Bon Appetit recipe that I got long, a long time ago. So I just used part of it. And honestly, it's, to die for. Yeah. And everyone loves it. We have it's people. such a great combination with the chocolate cake. It's like a Reese's bar. It is. You people know? we've had people come here like five years ago and still request it when they come and spend the weekend or something. Yeah. And it's a Christmas tradition for us. Okay. So uh Nightmare, which is our friend Ryan, says um Nightmare. That's Nightmare. Nightmare. So oh. Nightmare. Mm-hmm. He's asking uh because I know you can't read this. So um who is the better cook? <laughs> Oh, you know, maybe some of these people who are on the site should actually say, let, let some of the people who have been here and and think, oh, David, you must live a bit, so great because David is always cooking. How many meals have you had that David has cooked? And then tell us who is the better cook. It's the little things you do together, do together, do you together that make perfect relationships. Yeah. Um, I'm the better cook because I'm more careful. Alan is more adventurous. I won't take the risks he does. Like, for instance, he'll say, oh, you know what? It calls for, I don't know, it calls for olive oil. I'll, no, it calls for, for canola oil. I'll use olive oil. I use what I have. In a cake. Oh, no, I don't. I don't do those things. I did that one time. Um, the dog wouldn't even eat it. So Tachi says, what recipe was your favorite to develop? My favorite to develop was the orange olive oil. The story behind the orange olive oil cake on the site, which is honestly, I think it's a terrific recipe, not just because it's mine, but it's a great recipe. I went to this place called Poppage in in Lisbon, which was maybe five or six um, places up from my apartment in Lisbon when I was writing my book. Had this incredible orange cake, and I would eat it every day for breakfast, which is bizarre for the Portuguese. They have just a little bica of coffee, uh, B-I-C-A, little drink, and they're off. And uh, maybe they'll have a little bit of ham with cheese on a sandwich, and that's it. And so I begged them for the recipe, which they gave to me. I couldn't make it in Portugal because the flowers are so different. So when I got home, I was baking it and baking it, and it was nothing like what I had there. He was very frustrated. And after about maybe five times, I went, this is like a chiffon cake or something. This is not that. So then eventually I had to like deconstruct the whole thing and build it. So after 13 tries, we have the recipe that we have now. So that was a really great one. So, all right. So Sarah said that. We have that. Um, Willie says hi. Hey, Willie. Hi, That's Willie. Um, my favorite from the cookbook is the sea bass with fennel and orange. Mm, oh, that. I am so glad to hear that, Marsha. You know, nobody makes that recipe. That we know of. Well, that we know of. No one ever writes in and says, oh, I love that recipe. It's always the orange olive oil cake or the pork and clams or or the... Um, it's a beautiful combination. The, the seafood flavor. stew. So I'm so happy. Thank you so much. Yeah. And then your nephew says, I'm going to have to come up. We'll have to have a cook-up. Well, you know, Chris, you are more than welcome. Absolutely. Know this summer. He says he'll be the judge. We'll cook up you and I. Oh. That's what he means. I didn't know. That's Not with meant. him. Uh, next video, a cook-off, Liz Mayo says. Get ready to rumble. Yeah. 
The orange olive oil is spectacular, and I don't even really like cake, Suzanne said. And what's great about it, Suzanne, you're the one who told me that anyone who's lactose intolerant can have that because there is no dairy in there at all. The only fat is in the olive oil, which is really wonderful. David, can you give us all a cooking challenge then we can post them to Instagram? Yes, I will give you an Insta a cooking challenge. Let's think of a cooking challenge. What does that mean? Well, tell them, go out and cook the best blank you can. Let's, uh, let's make it somewhat easy because everyone has to use pantry staples. You, you do it. The most creative, superb pasta dish you can come up with using pantry ingredients. You can't go out and shop anything. You can't go out and go, oh, I'm going to get, you know, I'm going to get ground bison or I'm going to get, you know, boar's cheek with what you have. The best possible one, um, pasta dish with what you have. And we'll do hashtag LC challenge. That's How's a good that? idea. Okay, LC, hashtag LC challenge. Everybody I loves love pasta. That. Everybody loves yeah, that. That's exactly. a great idea. And using pa pantry staples. Yeah. So, but pantry can also be stuff from the fridge. So if they have fresh vegetables, whatever, no? Well, yeah, that's what pantry means. Oh, I thought pantry means... It means like pantry. what you have in the house. Staples. Oh, what you have? Oh. Staples. You know, I it's thought not like going up to pantry gym, closet. Going up to gym and getting all of his fancy meats. Oh, okay. um, game on, Sharon said. Terrific. Is there it. anything you guys aren't great at making would like to learn? Oh, God. You know, the thing, the big mistake or the mis big misconception about both of us is that we're incredible and we never screw up. We screw incredible up. Incredible cooks. We you are incredible. incredible. We are very much incredible people. Oh, we are incredible, incredible people. Um, incredible cooks. And the truth of the matter is we screw up on a regular basis. And I'm not ashamed to say that. Because no, but you get very upset when you screw up. When I screw up, I screw up. What's the big deal? We still eat it. Yeah, I do throw things around the room. Yeah. but. So we, we, there are a lot of things. I'm not really good at grilling, and neither is Alan. So this is Stephanie asking us this. I love that. We're not really good at grilling. Um, She's asking about grilling? No. She said, oh. what are you not really good at? And want to oh, learn. Really? I would love to learn to do that. Yeah. And Because um, I like baking, and I do I bake pretty well. But when it comes to grilling, I'm not a good griller. No. And neither is he. No, we've We know how up. to burn things on the grill and still have it raw in the middle. But I'll tell other you a that story. We had... Um, uh, Reed Drummond over in the city a long time ago with her publisher and her uh, uh, that, that was her children's book publisher, Kate. And then we were so enamored of Kate and Reed had to go back home that Kate and her husband and another editor for Reed Drummond, uh, the pioneer woman, came to Connecticut. And do you remember what happened? I was so nervous about this. I had fried chicken and ribs. I thought, you know, they deal with this, the pioneer woman. I burnt the fried chicken, and I screwed up the ribs, and that was all there was to eat besides his wonderful potato salad. So we, we never saw the them again. Who are they? I don't remember. You can tell They're, me later. Yeah, we don't like them anymore. Oh, shit. <laughs> Game on. There's such a great, that's such a great idea. I think so. That's my quarantine challenge. Cindy, great. Pasta, superb, excellent pasta, but using only the ingredients you have in the house. Uh, making meals for what I have in the house. Exactly. Liz Mayo, pasta, yeah. Says this Everybody Italian. So fun to see you guys. Hi from Boston. Hi, Deb. My quarantine challenge will be trying the sourdough. Now, that is good. Now, if you go, if you want to do the sourdough that I do, go to my Instagram and look at the uh, highlight. You'll see it right above, right below my name. It says sourdough, and it kind of takes you through. Uh, there's not a lot of narration. And if you have questions, ping me. Um, what's that hashtag again? Oh, God, what did I say? I'm getting a little drunk. You should write it down. I think it's LC... Right LC challenge hashtag LC challenge. Let's do that. No, it's not going to. That's not going to work. That's it. LC hashtag LC challenge. What's the trick for well made and not burned fried chicken? That's forked and knife. That's a very very good question. Um, I think what I have learned from that is to fry. now. This is not what Southern cooks do. So, I, uh, Gail and all you Southerners, I do apologize and I do. I'm very sorry. But I like to fry it till it's the right crispiness and the right color, and then I finish it off in the oven because that way I can control the temperature inside and I know what it is. I do know some cooks who actually cook it in the oven first and then batter it and then fry it, but I do it the other way around. That, to me, is the easiest way not to mess it up because I just – I don't make it enough. and um, It's a real art. And my skillet isn't big enough for more than four pieces, my uh, – my, um, cast iron skillet so that's what i do and i'll tell you something else another thing that's coming out on the site 
is a chicken that's like a fried chicken, but it's done in the oven. Can I tell the name of it? No, you can't. You're not oh. supposed to say any. What's wrong with you? Oh, I'm sorry. Do you not but read the what? instructions what? when you become a tester? He was already. He became a tester years ago, and he was kicked out. He begged to become a tester again. He's going to be kicked out. Well, anyway, so when this recipe comes out, it's like fried chicken, but you do it in the oven, and you, I tell you. It is easy. It's delicious. There's no no oil, so you're not getting all that fat. I don't know if that's going to make it on the site. It should make it on the site. I'm I have sure. no idea. I'll make sure that it does. So I just I just posted the uh, hashtag for the challenge. Uh, so it's LC Challenge, and um, you can put did that. You spell it correctly. I did. Capital L, capital C, C Challenge. Yeah. Is there two C's? Alan, capital L, capital C. Oh yeah, that's right. Right. Two C's. Oy. Have, have, have more, have more champagne. So Gail says, use an electric skillet for great fried chicken and fried okra. Now, Gail, that's well, wonderful. Fried okra, yeah, maybe. You, you're barking up the wrong tree. <laughs> you're barking that's up one the wrong vegetable tree. I can't, he will I not eat his okra. Nope, he will not eat his okra. I was like Mitch McConnell. He won't eat an okra. Um, thanks. Uh, I've always seen it burnt on the outside, but leaving the inside raw. I know. I agree with that. Another thing, too, Gail, tell me about this. Take the chicken out so it can it can it can warm up a little bit. Because um, in the refrigerator, it can be really, really, really cold, and it's going to be very hard to get all the way through. What did we cook recently? That was a disaster because it was so cold from the refrigerator that it, the outside got co overcooked and the inside was still raw. Um, Ryan Nathanson, foods you just won't eat. Okra is one for him. Yes. Yeah, okra is one. I, I otherwise I eat. I love yeah, everything. You're more adventurous. Very very. You I would. Chocolate covered ants. No, I would not eat any bug. You know, I would not. He's not a bugger. No, <laughs> no but, <laughs> you bugger. But I do love game and, and fish, everything, everything. I'm not a big fan of um, organ meats. I do like, um, what are these called? Sweetbreads. Sweet I like sweetbreads. Um, I will not. He loves liver. Cab's liver. He oh, loves. And there's a place up here that makes a delicious cab's liver. Where is that? Again? In Bethel. And Bethel, yes. Oh, well, great. It's yeah. called Z Z Zaringa. Zaringa? Yeah. Zaringa, I think, so in Bethel, sense. Connecticut. Yeah. Um, so I won't eat liver. I won't eat kidney. I only have one kidney. I had one removed, so I won't eat kidney. Um, TMI. So, that's not TMI. That's, 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 a, that's a call for pity. Pity the, pity the man. Um, but, and, and I'm not as adventurous as he will. He'll eat a lot more. Would you eat brains? A little. Would you I try it? Yeah. yeah, I would eat brains. Um, Doesn't mean that I'll eat it again, but I'll try it. Yeah, you would try. It. Yeah, yeah. He, yeah. You, in Portugal, you ate a lot of stuff. Yeah, yeah. He, gnarly looking stuff. He'll try. So that's like the big thing for me. Uh, and as far as like regular foods, things that I, I, you know, honestly, I don't like tomatoes. The gooey gunk raw. in the you middle. Like raw. The gooey gunk. I have to take all of it out and take all those seeds and that jelly stuff, and then I can eat it. But not that gooey stuff. Can't eat it with the texture. So we go, Gail says absolutely, which I think absolutely is about the um, chicken, letting the chicken come up more to room temperature, so therefore it's not so cold inside. So uh, forked and knife, that is a good opportunity, uh, a good a little nugget of information. So BE said, so no, Sharon says, my husband is refilling my wine so I don't have to leave the computer. <laughs> Very good. That's a good husband. You're not, you're, even you're, the bottle's right there. You're still not refilling mine. Refilled mine. I know. Refilled mine. Um, and so B.E. says, do I have to adjust the sourdough recipe for the altitude? Probably. Oof, you know, I am just not a high altitude cook. Um, there's mean, a great book called Mile High, Sky High, uh, by, Elizabeth, by uh, Susan Purdy, the other Susan Purdy. You know, we know two Susan Purdy, about high altitude baking. But if you write Beth at leadsculinaria.com, Beth at sign leadsculinaria.com. She can um, direct you to the right way because we're at sea level basically. And so I've never encountered those. So there will be the natural, normal bread issues that you have, um, but that's about it. Um, so yeah, you know, when cooking your chicken, don't mess with it while it's cooking, turn once. There we go. So how do you know when to turn it though? Gail, you know, when do you know how to turn it? Yeah. Okay. What else is here? I'm sitting. Oh, by the way, can you hear the music in the background? Just say yes. Like, music equals yes. We're trying to be like, you know, the cozy jazz bar. No one's time to close the shop. <laughs> maybe, maybe, <laughs> no one's hearing it. Uh, when it's brown on one side. So Tachi says not really. Hey, Google, volume work. five. 
That's good. Can you hear it now? Nope, nope, nope. Everyone's saying no. So okay, it doesn't here. matter. Can you hear it now? Or is it getting in the way of us getting talking? Alan, you don't know. Let them say. Go to your room. <laughs> oh, so Stephanie says, I used to be high altitude, beaten conch, and I find you use less flour in breads. Otherwise, it's way too dense. Experiment with other breads first, and then you'll get a better feel for it. Good. What things can we look forward to on the site? Oh, gosh. Well, well, obviously, I can't talk about these things, Ryan. I'm not letting it. We have a bunch of recipes. He gets so excited when he makes a recipe that he likes. He wants to tell the world. He wants to crow to the world. I gotta crow. Um, different things that are coming on. There's a lot more writing coming on. We are reviving our He Said, She Said, which is the culinary contrarians, where Renee and I hey, take Google. up stop. Where Renee and I take up a topic and we usually are on opposite sides. Renee and I agree on very little. So Renee Shetler Rossi, Renee Shetler, our um, editor in chief. So those writings are going on. Hey, Google, stop. And then we are uh, also having more Never Cook Naked columns, which are is our advice column. Um, it started off with uh, Mark and Bruce, uh, Mark uh, Bruce Weinstein and Mark Scarborough, and Alan and I are taking it over. So if you have any culinary questions, we can answer them there. So there's more writing going on, and then also our podcast is going to be launching, relaunching very soon. Those of you who like the podcast, we're going to be relaunching that very soon, and we have we're doing more lives, and uh, we're also doing more videos. Yeah, right. So that's that. And tell us, is there something that you would like? Let us know if there's something you would like. Bye, Gail. Bye, Gail. They all said the volume was good. You turned it off. Liz Mayo said, "I'd love to cook for both of you when we return to the. We would love that, and we came that. this close." Yeah, it's supposed to be last month. Close to going to Vero and renting. Um, but then with all this stuff going on, we just didn't decided not to do it. We didn't want to fly. Um, Got to go make dinner. Buy fork to knife. See you next time. That's wonderful. Oh, this, I think that's enough. What time? It's so, all right. Fun. We're probably going to wrap this up. Uh, more content in cast iron pans and cooking with them. Yes, Ryan, I will be happy to do that. And, I and how to clean them. And how to clean them. We did put something up about how to clean them recently. Um, does Veneta translate, Lenny? Veneta is that intense rage, anger, drive that pushes you through to get things done. That's what Veneta is. Suzanne, what's the hot recipe on the site right now? The no-need uh, artisan bread, the five-minute no-need artisan bread, and the Jim Leahy no-need bread. People, it's going berserko. Everyone's making bread, bread, bread. And if you've never made bread, those are the two easiest ways to kind of get in. Uh, so Ann Banks said, what is the best reasonably priced steak to cook in a cast iron pan? I finally seasoned mine that I bought two years ago. Bear in mind, I'll have to double the price due to my location in Canada. Boy, what is the maybe best a, price steak? A New, York, a New York strip. I would do a New York strip if you could. Um, that way it's it's not a full ribeye or anything. So you could do a New York strip. Uh, my eggs sale. always burn and stick. Why? It's because you're not. Cooking. Oh, Ryan! Because you're not cooking <laughs> that them. That right, happens Ryan. to me all the time. You're not cooking them right. Your heat's too high. You don't have enough fat. That's the reason why. You have to do a little bit of a lower heat and have more fat. And then Susan Bingham and I'm so excited for more writing and podcasts every day. There'll be a lot. Trust me. Liz, my friend who is a pro chef, says he loves an invite because no one cooks for you. You know, it's true. I'm not a chef. Alan's not a chef. The one is not a chef. Um, and People really get nervous about inviting us over. And the truth of the matter is you shouldn't. Because as you can see, I'm so petite. I never eat. I love eating. I love when people just, even a burger, it makes you feel so loved and cared for. Um, so B says, thanks. I will write to Beth. You're, you're more than welcome. Liz, they feel intimidated. They totally feel intimidated. Make sure you post your next episode on Facebook. We are. I think if all is all goes well, giving you guys a little heads up, if all goes well and... Um, and we get our equipment, we're going to be doing a very simple three-ingredient mac and cheese on um, our next live. That'll be a cook-along. So I'll let you guys know oh, in another time. my dessert? At some point, we'll be doing his dessert. I have a beautiful so, eat. So, Anne, I'm really sorry that it's... Is anyone else having buffering problems? I'm so sorry to hear that. But um, it's been almost 35, 40 minutes. And we he wanted to, to be off in 15. Yeah, so This is long enough. Thank you all yes. for joining us for our, our little Q&A. Oh, by the way, one question for you guys. Do you like the name Two Fat Homos, or does it bother you? And don't forget about the LC Challenge. 
and thank you for joining us. Yeah, but I want to hear really what they're nice. going to say. Well, they'll get back to you. Or okay. they have to wait. I want to wait till they say. Oh. So you can write here. Do you like the name Two Fat Homos? Closing up, David. We are, but it's yes. one. Love you a little bit now, but thank you. This was so much fun. Don't right. bother me. Okay, right. I won't bother you. Um, uh, it doesn't bother. It's what she is. Oh, it doesn't bother you. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Thank, thank you, you so much. We don't want to bore you. Absolutely love the name. Okay. Bye. Love you. Bye. Mwah, chin mwah, chin. Mwah, mwah. Oh, yeah. Chin chin. Oh, bye. Bye. There you go. Mm -hmm. ah.